NVIDIA's RTX 4000 or Lovelace, the next generation, should be packing around two times the power of the current Ampere GPUs. But supposedly, it's also going to have two times something else. I'm going to tell you what you should be doing to prepare now and why it may be a very big deal. Let's get started. Remember to check out our video sponsor, CDK Deals. They're running their best deal of the year in November. Use my code CC20 for 35% off. And yes, those Windows 10 CD keys are also gonna work on Windows 11. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button if you like hearing about new GPUs and maybe if things get better and not worse when they eventually come out. All right, so today's subject, the RTX 4000 GPUs, what we supposedly think Nvidia is gonna call them. I don't know if they're going to skip to the 5000. Would make sense, 4000. I mean, they've had the 2080 Ti, 3080 Ti. We certainly want to see a 4080 Ti, so makes complete sense. But with all of the manufacturing delays that we've been experiencing, who knows if that's going to be pushed back or not. We even heard recently that the AMD, the 7000 series GPUs, um, they passed their process, which was called being taped out, which means that the design process is done, so they're well on the way. And we can also expect NVIDIA to be very close in that process if they're they're not already a little bit ahead. So what we have to talk about today is that, all right, they say that RTX 4000 may come with around twice the performance of the current generation Ampere. Now, we don't know if that's going to mean twice the performance of a 3090. I doubt it might be exactly that high, but we can certainly expect a lot more performance from these GPUs, even surpassing the 3090. That would make sense with the not only the way that NVIDIA has been going in recent years. I mean, look at what the 3080 did to the previous even 2080 Ti. And in many cases, the 3080 even doubled the performance of the 2080. So definitely something that can really, really happen. Now, this is going to come with something else that may be almost twice the amount, and this is going to be the most important part. Better performance, of course, is great. Everybody likes it, but two times the power draw, the wattage, that's going to be the huge number here because that has so many ramifications in the real world as to what power supply you're going to get, your system, the heat that these you know GPUs put out, a million things that can really happen. Now, generally, an increase in power supply signifies even some faster type of VRAM, but in this case, it doesn't seem like the VRAM will be completely different than we have existing in the RTX 3090. Most likely, of course, it will be faster, GDDR. 6x it's going to have benefits compared to the current generation of vram but we're not expecting a massive breakthrough in the type of vram where i believe most of these gains will come from will be in the gpu itself and it looks like in order for nvidia and even amd with their next generation gpus to be able to extract that much performance out of these gpus the power numbers are going to be obscenely high now the current rtx 3090 if we use that as the benchmark for a high-end gpu and, you know, a fairly high power draw has a TDP of 350 watts. Even now, there are certain RTX 3090s, sometimes with a custom BIOS, if you look at some of the EVGA or even Asus Strix cards, that will pretty much get to 500 watts and sometimes even beyond. So, to expect that next generation we may see some GPUs hitting 600 watts would really not be unheard of because we're basically hitting that now with some of these GPUs. And the key point here is you're going to need almost an enthusiastic enthusiast level system to power even lower tier GPUs than something like a 4090 or a 4080. We're going to have to see exactly where the power limits are going to go, but if this generation, for example, they recommended maybe 750 watts as like a bare minimum for an RTX 3080, even maybe a 3090, even though you really should be at 850, maybe to a thousand watt power supply, just to give it a little bit more headroom because they do have some spikes in power. So if we look at something like maybe a 4090 drawing, maybe be almost 600 watts of power. Look at some of these new CPUs that have just been released, like the Intel 12900K. That is not getting more efficient at all. These CPUs can easily pull over 300 watts as well. So with a powerful GPU like that, that you would pair with this CPU, which is currently the fastest one for gaming, you're looking at 900 watts plus all the other system components. That's easily a thousand watts that you may be actually pulling with these type of components. So that means you're going to need a minimum, not of a thousand watt power 
supply, probably 1200 watts at a minimum if you want to run something like a 4090 and a 12900K. Previously, 1200 watt power supplies really were left in the domain of really the high end enthusiasts that were running like an HEDT processor, like, you know, maybe a Threadripper or like a 10980XC, together with a really powerful GPU and often SLI GPUs, two of them. But it looks like if you're going to be a high end enthusiast in the next generation, probably like a 1200 watt power supply may actually be the minimum. Even if you can get away with a thousand watts, it's going to be way too close and you're not going to have the headroom there, especially for these power hungry components. So 1200 to 1500 watt power supplies, looks like that threshold is certainly going to be going up. And even if you're not going to be going into the highest end, let's say if you're more of like a, a mid range and mid tier uh, sort of gamer, if you're using a 650 to 750 watt power supply, believe me, those numbers are also going to go up with the next generation mid range cards. So let's say if you want to get a 4070 or a 4080, you're probably not going to get away with a really skimpy power supply. You're going to need something that you probably need close to for a 3090 now. So that means at least 850 to 1000 watts for the mid-range card. So the reason that I'm telling you this is that I know there are a lot of people sort of on the fence or haven't gotten an RTX 3000 GPU and they're sort of waiting until either prices come down or the next generation is released. Who knows by then, maybe price and availability is better. So I get that people are waiting for that. What can you do to prepare now, knowing that all of these GPUs are going to have really, really high power draws? So if you're buying a new power supply, I would first say, okay, think of the GPU level that you think you're going to budget for, you know, next year or, or in the near future and get a little bit more power supply than you really think you need. So if you were looking at 1000 watt power supplies for a high end system before, why don't you get something maybe 1200 watts? I think it might be definitely much more future proof because in the future, if these GPUs come out, with an insane amount of power draw, what it looks like both AMD and NVIDIA will do, at least you're going to have your system already set up and you can upgrade from whatever you have now. Certainly, power consumption is not getting any lower, so you can't go any lower than the current recommended specs for the current high-end RTX 3000 GPUs, but if you really want to future-proof, I think you have to start looking towards the future and get a little bit more power supply than you really think you need. And something else is also going to be sort of the heat output. Remember, with a lot more power, these GPUs are going to get much hotter. Look, for example, at the RTX 3090. It produces by itself an insane amount of heat, and if you're taxing the VRAM, it gets to really high temperatures. A T-junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius is sort of the max, and most of them, even water-cooled, tend to stay in the 90s, which is really hot for GDDR6X. So that's something else to consider. With these GPUs getting faster, you have to not only worry about the power, but also managing the heat itself. So these are a couple of things that I've been doing, even since systems that I'm building now, I'm starting to think into the future if these systems are really going to be sufficient to power whatever may come next with two things in mind power draw as well as sort of the dissipation of heat. So let's analyze a future scenario with a more difficult sort of case design and a more difficult architecture in general than we're used to. Let's talk about something like MATX or Mini ITX. Recently, a lot of people, myself included, have gotten into building smaller computers. Is that first, you often can't fit everything that you want in a small case. You're going to be limited to your motherboard, even to the GPU size and different coolers that you use. And then secondly, and and more importantly, you're not really going to be able to cool it sufficiently unless you really have a good layout and you're able to integrate certain components. Let me use this case as an example. Recently, Silverstone sent this to me for me to take a look at it. This is going to be the Alta G1M. Now, this is an MATX case, which can also do mini ITX. MATX is going to be sort of the, you know, the medium standard, which is smaller than ATX, which is the regular size motherboard that likely many people have in regular systems. But this will support MATX and lower. Now, the really interesting thing about this case, while it is a smaller case than usual, it's not particularly small due to its design. It has something that's very, very interesting. If you look on the bottom, you have this massive 180 millimeter fan, which basically as heat rises, it's going to shoot all that hot air up. And if you have a powerful GPU in here, I tested this with a 6900 XT, which has a TDP of 300 watts. And while it may not be as insane as a 3090s power draw, it certainly gets very, very hot as well when you're gaming or even utilizing that VRAM. So basically the idea here is the 
fan on the bottom is going to send all of that hot air through the chassis all the way up through the top and the air will exit up the top and then of course perforated panels you know mesh type panels all the way around with perforated openings for airflow to get in not only to the gpu but also on the cpu side that's going to be so if you're planning ahead for these very power hungry gpus take the high-end gpus and cpu configurations now as an example of stuff you may need to do even for mid-range stuff that comes out in the next few years so basically the first thing aside from being able to fit your components the reason why i like this little bit larger but still small case is that look at the massive gpu that i was able to fit in here that gpu is going to give a lot of cases trouble just because it's you know completely massive but in here it fits without any problem and and having those huge 180 millimeter fans blow on the gpu and allow all that hot air to escape is certainly going to be essential to cooling the hot gpu like this and then of course you'll get airflow from the other sides as well and then even in a case like this which it can support a larger aio you don't have to do an air cooler like i did here the aio can allow you to bring some fresh air also from the one of the sides of the case and if you're using another power hungry and hot cpu like something like a 12 900k in this case i had a 5800x which is also a very hot running cpu but if you're using something else and you wanted to use an aio that way when the hot air comes in that fan is going to blow everything up to the top as well so if you're designing a smaller case now that you plan to keep for a few years keep that in mind don't get anything that's going to have restricted airflow especially for your gpu and then make sure that you can actually fit a sufficient power supply in there for example here i'm using also silverstone's 1000 watt sfxl power supply this is going to be their smaller power supply it's not the smallest it is the l which is a little bit longer but it still fits in many many smaller cases and thousand watt power supply is extremely impressive for the size previously if you wanted a high performing small power supply you have to stick with like 750 silverstone has another one that's 800 watts but generally they've never gone up this high but now with the gpu power draws that are coming in the future this makes absolute sense so to conclude, I know a lot of people are waiting for the next generation of GPUs for better prices, better availability, and something you can be doing now while these other parts are available, making sure that your case is going to support a very powerful GPU that's very power hungry and also runs very hot, as well as having a sufficient power supply with that in mind down the road. So that way, if you do upgrade, you don't have to change any more components than perhaps just your GPU. So certainly just something to keep in mind, but it looks like the NVIDIA and AMD the GPUs of next generation are going to be probably twice the performance, but twice the heat and twice the power draw are also very likely to come along with that. All right, guys, so remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and I'll see you guys on the next video.